Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the second video in this series on making an RTS game in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, we'll be setting up our camera. So open up your project, and let's make a start. Alrighty, so here we are back in the editor. Between this video and the last video, all I've done is set up source control for Patreon members, and also, I was able to delete the characters folder. All I had to do was open and close the project, and I was able to delete it as needed. So let's go to core, and let's go and start creating our camera. So what we're going to do is actually get rid of this top-down controller. We aren't going to use it. We're just going to delete it. All right, with it deleted, let's go back to core. Clearly, player is gone due to source control, so we'll create a new folder called player. And in here, and in here, we're going to right click and go to blueprint class, and we are going to select pawn. And we're going to name this BP camera pawn. Okay, pop that open. And really quickly, before we go any farther forward, I'm just going to go to edit, editor preferences. And in here, I'm going to look for the part that says asset editor open location, and I'm going to choose main window. I'm going to close that and I'm going to reopen the camera now. All right, I'm going to open full blueprint editor because I closed it once. It's going to do that. And then let's go over to the viewport. All right, well, hey, there is our new default scene route. I say new because this series was originally done in Unreal 4 and it looked a bit different at that time. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit add and we're going to search for collision. And then we want a collision sphere. And we're just going to name this, we're actually going to rename it as collision sphere. So I hit F2 to rename it. And I'm going to make this the root component. There we go. And I want to resize this in all axes. So I'm going to hit the lock button to change all values at one time. And I'm going to set this value to be 0.5. So we have a slightly smaller floor there. I'll leave that at 32. That will stay the same. And we're gonna create a new collision profile for this a little bit later in this section of the tutorial. So we'll worry about collision in a moment. Next, what we're going to do is we're gonna add a camera. Actually, we're gonna add a spring arm. Sorry, I'm used to calling it a camera boom. It is a spring arm. We're gonna add a spring arm component, which I will name camera boom, so I know to look for it. And for our camera boom, what we're going to do is we are going to change its rotation. So under rotation on the pitch or Y axis, we're gonna set it to negative 75. And notice now that it's angled upwards like that. As for our length, I'm going to change our target length to 1325. We do not want to inherit pitch. We do want to inherit yaw and roll. Now we're not inheriting pitch because we want this to pitch independently. We will want camera lag and rotation lag. We'll leave the default settings at 10, 10, and 0. And we do not want to do a collision test. We are going to allow the camera to clip through anything we need it to clip through. And then lastly, we need a camera. So we're just going to search for camera and there we go. I'm going to name this player camera. Now let's go up to our camera. There's a bit of an issue. The camera is rotated. It's pointing straight on though, right? Well, it's rotated 75 degrees in the positive and we can tell this because it's attached to this and it should inherit that rotation. We can also tell because it says 75 here. So I'm just going to change that to zero and now we're angled downwards. So let's just really quickly grab this and just drag it onto the map for a second. And we can see the way the camera is looking. Now, don't worry about the angle. We will change all this up in a little bit. But, you know, that gets us where we need to be. Let's delete the camera from our map. Let's just save everything really quickly. And just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to create a new player controller. We're not going to do anything with it yet. But I'm going to look for our player controller. I'm going to do BP player controller. I'm just going to pop it open, save it, and close it out. And then go back up to core, go to settings. I'm just going to rename our current game mode to BP, well, uh, RTS game mode. I'm going to pop it open real quick. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find our default pawn class. And this will be our BP camera pawn instead. And our default player controller class will be our BP player controller. We're going to go ahead and save that. 
And really quickly while I'm thinking about this, I'm going to set it so it always compiles or always saves when it compiles, regardless if it's successful or not. All right, next, I'm gonna go to window and I'm gonna go to world settings. And in world settings, I'm gonna set my game mode. I'm just gonna select it and click the arrow there. And if I hit play, we should be in the camera, which we can't move currently. All right, so, so what we're gonna do now is create our camera movement component. Instead of doing this directly in the camera component like we did in the last series. So I'm gonna go to player, I'm gonna right click, and I'm going to blueprint class. And in blueprint class, I'm gonna select actor component. And this will be my BP pawn movement comp, as in component. There we go. I'm not sure why it's simulating, but I'm going to stop that from doing whatever it's currently doing. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to get rid of all these. We're going to do a custom event. Actually, we'll leave the event begin play for now, and then we'll do a custom event. And this will be init component. And all we're going to do here is we're going to get owner. Now, there is already a hard reference between this and its owner. So what I'm about to do doesn't really violate encapsulation, but we are going to cast. So we're going to create a hard reference. And we do cast to BP and then camera pawn. Now the camera pawn, again, it already is going to have that hard reference. So this really doesn't matter too much that we're doing this. And what we're going to do is camera pawn ref. There we go. So that's a hard reference to camera pawn. And this does not violate encapsulation because it is like with like. I'd be doing friend of class if I had to if this was in C++. You no, know, actually, I did want the event tick. I don't know why I deleted it. So we're going to put the event tick back in there. Okay, let's go and let's go and go to our class settings. Do we need to change anything here? No, class defaults. Doesn't look like we need to change anything in there. We aren't doing replication in this tutorial, so we aren't going to worry about replicating the component. But what we do need to do is create a new basic movement function. So under our functions, I'm going to going to hit the plus sign and do basic movement controls. This will require two inputs, one for the X axis and one for the Y axis. So instead of having two functions, we're going to handle movement in both directions at the same time. This will allow us to make the movement a bit smoother. For the sake of just making my life a tiny bit easier, we're going to put this into a folder. We're going to call movement and then utilities as a subcategory. There we go. This, as I said, will have two inputs. They will both be a type float and one will be access value x. And the other one, I'm just going to copy that for a second, will be access value y. And we're going to promote both of these to local variables. So this will be access value x local and this one will be access value y local all right plug those into each other put any reroutes you want in so you can make it nice and neat we are then going to check is the camera disabled or not and we don't have the variable for that so we need to create it so we'll start with our branch off our branch we're just going to do a not And then from this Boolean, we'll pull off and do promote to variable. And this is B disable camera movement. And we will just compile this really quickly. And I was going to put this into a folder called movement subcategory bools. There we go. And this will actually default out to be private. So we want that to be marked as private so we can't change it elsewhere by mistake so we know when and where we're changing it. So all this is doing is determining can the camera move. What we're next going to do is determine in which planes we are moving. So we're going to start with both the X and Y planes. We're going to do branch. And we want to know, is are our values not equal to 1? So we're going to grab both our local values here and we're going to do not equal and i said one i meant to say not equal to zero so if it's not equal to zero in both values then we are moving on both the x and y planes so we want to do and so if they're both not equal then we do this there we go let's just neaten this up a t little bit so it's a little bit easier to read there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the owner again. 
Now we do have a reference to the camera, so we could actually just take the camera ref instead. And we could do is add actor local offset. And we will sweep if we want to be able to tell if we're hitting anything we need to worry about. We're gonna put that onto true. And just line that up there for our delta location what we're going to do is we are going to add two vectors together so we're going to take our local x value here I'm just going to duplicate it for a moment if it will let me apparently control w does not work anymore and we are going to multiply this by three values so we want to multiply we want to add three pins in and we don't have these two new variables yet so we need to create them so let's create this first one and this will be our default movement speed. And the third one will be our movement speed modifier. So this will be movement speed modifier. There we go. And in fact, I'm gonna duplicate these nodes down here and I'm gonna plug the Y into this one. Let's really quickly compile. Let's select our default movement and we're gonna default our movement out to 15. Again, we want to set this to private and we're going to put this into a category called movement settings. There we go. And for our movement speed modifier, let's again compile. Oh, we don't need to hit compile for that one. We already did. We're gonna set that to one. This will also be in our settings folder. Okay, so there we go. We have two settings. We have those two there. Also, really quickly, this is just gonna go into a category called references. So this is default to one. This is default to 15. We're gonna add these two together. So we're gonna do, oh, actually, we're not gonna add them together that way. We are going to do an addition this way. So we'll do add, and then we're going to split the structures of both of these. And this one will go into our Y. Our Z will remain zero, our X will remain zero. And this first one will go into X with the Y and Z remaining zero. There we go. And just changing this up, I'm gonna tuck everything underneath so we have a little bit more room to play with. So again, all we're doing here is moving on both our X and our Y axes. There we go. And I'm just gonna tuck those there. And I'm gonna move those to the right a bit. So this is both X and Y. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check in the X plane only. So I'm actually gonna duplicate all of this. I'm gonna paste it down here. I'm gonna plug that into the false. And we're just gonna remove this Y bit, get rid of that, plug that directly into there. Are we moving in the X plane only? Now, the reason why we did it in this order is, well, if this returns false, one of the two might be true. So we're checking these two first, because if they're both true, then we want to do this. If one is true, then we're gonna to wanna to do this branch or the branch we haven't created yet. So for this, well, we're gonna delete this because we don't need it anymore. We're gonna delete this bit, and we're gonna, before we do anything else, move this camera pond down and split this structure. We are gonna plug this into our X value and leave Y and Z as zero. And then finally, we're gonna paste it one more time, and this will be in uh, Y only. I just saw the typo in my earlier comment, which is why I kind of paused there. So this is move in X only, this is move in Y only. Yeah, and plug that in. We can delete the and and the less or not equal to zero on the X side and leave the Y side plugged in. We can repeat the process of deleting. So I was just double checking that we deleted the right one. We can delete the X off of that one. We can split that structure after we moved that down a bit. And we can move that back now. And this will go into our Y. Line that up, and there we go. We now have our basic movement component completed for our forward and backwards and left and right directions. We need to implement it though. So let's go back to our camera pawn. And in our camera pawn, what we're going to do is we are going to add, and then we are going to search for BP. And we want BP pawn movement component. And we're just gonna call this pawn movement component. There we go. And you can see in here, we have our settings. Probably should set that to private as well. In fact, that's what we'll do. Go back here, find our speed movement modifier, set that to private. All right, there we go. Now what we need to do is actually implement these events. So let's go back to our main window for a second, even though we don't need to. Go to project settings, that we do need to do. In project settings, go to input, and let's open up our, well, not worry about that. Let's worry about this access mapping bit. Let's just add a new access mapping in 
two of them. One will be called move forward. We're going to have two settings in here. Actually, let's have four. One of them will be W on the keyboard. One will be S on the keyboard. This one will be up. And this one will be down. And we're going to set W to 1, S to negative 1, up to 1, and down to negative 1. The next one will be move right. And this will also have four values. And we'll start with A. We're going to look for on the keyboard. And then we'll have D again on the keyboard, left, and then right. All right, so A will be negative one, because that's left. D, which is right, will be one. Left will be negative one, and right will be one. All right, we don't need to save this. It automatically saves for us, if you're not aware of that. However, I just realized that hadn't saved. Let's go over to our player controller. Let's pop this open, go to our full blueprint editor. And in here, what we're gonna do is just move the tick down for a minute. I'm gonna hold the S key and I'm gonna put a sequence in, plug that into our begin play there. And then the first thing I do is I'm just gonna do show mouse cursor. And now I could default this in the class defaults as well, but I'd like doing it here. And then we're going to do get player pawn. And from here, we're gonna cast to the BP camera pawn. And again, this really doesn't violate capsulation because in reality, what I would be doing is I would be setting these to be friends of, I wouldn't be using interfaces. These things should know of each other and talk to each other. All right. So I'm going to promote that to a variable and this will be my camera pawn ref. And this will go into a category called references. And then I'm also from this going to get my pawn movement component. And I want to get pawn movement component. I'm sure I spelled that wrong, one wrong, but whatever. I'll promote that to a variable, and this will be our camera movement comp ref. Actually, I'm just gonna rename this as camera movement ref. So camera movement ref. Right, if you're getting a read none on this, that means that this cast is failing, and that is a problem. You need to work out why the cast is failing, and most likely, this is failing because they can't see the camera pawn or there isn't one spawning into the world because there isn't a player start, what have you. Right, so that's the start of our begin play. Now let's set up our basic movement really quickly. So what we're gonna do is three simple steps for setting up our camera. So first we're gonna get our move forward. We want the access event. And then we're gonna get our move right. And we want our access event again there. So that's step one and two. And then step three, we grab our camera movement ref. And from here, what we do is we do basic movement controls and we plug in the X there. And likewise, we plug in the Y to that reroute I just added in. And then into our access values, we take from the move forward, we plug into the X and from the move uh, right into the Y. All right, let's go ahead and test this. Let's hit play. Okay, so my movements doesn't seem to be working. Just going to switch over here and see what's going on. So it's feeding forward. And we're getting down to that fall, so that's good. I'm just gonna move this to the side so that I can see what's happening when I switch back to this window. Interesting. All right, give me one second. I lied, don't give me a second. So hey, I had a read none error. Let's just quickly look at how to fix this. So access none, trying to tell where it's at. So why is this? Well, cause I made a very simple mistake and I already know what it is before looking. We set the reference here. So we have nothing we're referencing cause we haven't called this up. So those are our camera pawn and here on event begin play, we're gonna get the pawn and we're going to init component. And we go there, there we are. That's what it's gonna call. So let's plug that into the event begin play and that should take care of our read none error. So now if I go back here and hit play, there we go, our camera is moving. All right, that takes us through the setup for this video. If you've enjoyed setting up your camera and are looking forward to continuing to work on the remaster series, please drop a like below. It lets me know I'm bringing you content that you enjoy and appreciate. If you wanna take your support a bit further and make sure you're here for the next videos, make sure to hit that subscribe 
and the notify icon. YouTube really loves those things. And if you want to take your support just even a little bit further, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. Patreon sponsors at upper tiers get instant access to all ongoing and completed projects, and at other tiers get access once projects are completed on YouTube. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.